watercolor save your life because recently i received an email that made me think it can if you follow me on instagram you may have seen that i shared and of course i kept the identity of this person completely private but i did receive an email recently um, of someone who tried to on a live herself recently and and came out of it in one way or another and is still with us praise god uh and she credits in part her experience and her journey with watercolor i am not a doctor i am not a mental health professional or amateur in any way shape or form i'm not making claims that watercolor can in fact save a life literally or figuratively however i know from personal experience that watercolor brush to paper has an incredibly powerful effect on the trajectory of our thoughts. So tonight, what I thought would be really invigorating is that uh, we could just share. We could share our experiences, share if you have a story, I'm going to paint. Um, I would love for you to share um, your experience with watercolor being redemptive in some way. And the phrase that kept coming up was you are enough. And I know it sounds woo woo and I know it sounds, yeah, but where you are right now, what supplies you have right now is enough. Sarah, you're right. Art is therapy. And I'm also not, uh, I didn't major or graduate or have a paper that tells me that I can talk about art therapy. So again, everything I say, is just from user experience. <laughs> Supplies you have tonight are enough. The paper you have, even if it's the worst, just the pits is enough. The space you have to paint in. Yep, it's enough. And so I am going to start painting and continue with that thought. And I would love for you to just keep the comments coming if you are already feeling like this is lifting you up in some way, go ahead and give this a boop. That's a like, it's a heart, it's a, a thumbs up or a heart. I forget. Uh, but we'd love to hear from you. All right. So let's get down to the painting table. Um, I'm going to be keeping an eye on comments. I do not have Kelly helping me here today. So you're going to have to be patient with me. If I miss your comment, I don't read it. Um, certainly comment it again comment it is that um oh, tammy tammy k is here friends and i'm so glad she is because she in fact tammy if i'm not mistaken friend you are in fact in the professional realm of this situation are you are you not so tammy go ahead and um share with us i would love for you to be in the comment section as much as you can uh because yeah that would be fabulous. <clears throat> All right. So I'm just going to get to painting. Uh, Alexandra says, as a licensed therapist, I can't tell you enough how it is so therapeutic. I use it in my practice and call it coping through crafting. Amen. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. I have no good light now to paint with you, but tomorrow I'm going to watch again and paint with you. Denny, I just want to say the light you have now is okay. I get in that loop where I'm like, ugh, I don't have daylight. I don't have natural light. It's cloudy out. What you have right now is enough. You are enough. Yes, Tammy K is a licensed mental health therapist. Fabulous. Tammy, you said something to me a while back and you said, gosh, I wish I could figure out how to invite you and get you right on into this live right now. <clears throat> Tammy, do you want to be in this live? Because I will send you an invitation right now, friend. I will send you an invitation. I will send you a link to this. I'm putting you on the spot. It's okay if you say no. But if you want to join me, I will get you in here within like a few minutes. So you tell me if you want to join me. I, I'm, a, I'm a girl for spontaneity. So I will keep an eye out for your yes or your not right now, Christy. I'm feeding my family or whatever it is you might be doing. How can I say no to you? All right, friends. So I am seriously going to put you on the spot, Tammy. 
Okay, do it. Like as as on the spot, I think as as anyone could be. Yeah. Hey, it's fine. All I can see is your face, so that's what my head is saying. It's just you and me chatting. It's that's fine. right. That's right. <laughs> so, I want you to share with everyone what you shared with me when we spoke a while back about. Okay anxiety what was it anxiety and creativity yeah it's just this idea that and i discovered art like painting three years ago you know pandemic a lot of us discovered new talents new gifts which was a blessing for me it got me through a lot um but anxiety is something i've always struggled with and so when i started to paint i realized like for example this morning i hadn't painted since two days ago and I was feeling the anxiety going like pretty badly because for me, it's like, it's this calming place. And so when I paint, it just like, and it paints something that I enjoy. Sometimes it's not always enjoyable, but the process should be enjoyable, right? Um, not the end result. And when I experience that process, you know, I find myself calming down. I mix, there's a plane going overhead in case you hear that, we live by an airport. So it is what it is but I find myself to be able to calm down a lot quicker and I can utilize those skills later on um, when I am in a tense situation. So what I had shared with you was kind of about this idea of trauma. So trauma is stored in our right brain, the right side of our brain. And when we do art, that's our creative brain. When we do art, we are creating and enjoying and we can't possibly think about the trauma and the negative stuff that's going around in our head. And the other piece is that as we practice the self-care, we might not always have the words to describe the bad things that are going on, but when we start to use art, it helps to heal our brain and it helps us to find ways to be able to uh, be healthier and to talk about the things we've gone through so we can process and work through. So that's kind of the gist of it, but it's powerful. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So I remember what I heard too, you had said something very succinct and it was like, I hope I have this correct, that when you're being creative, your brain can't also be, is it have anxiety as much or as much of an impact? What was that? Right. So it's just this idea that you can only think of one thing at, at a time, right? In general. And so if you are creating you are processing your art, you're choosing the colors. Like if you're creating, but you're just doing kind of a rote thing, like you've painted this a million times, you don't have to think about the details and the aspects of it, then your brain can seep into all the yucky stuff pretty fast. But if it's something kind of new and you're color selecting and you're trying to stay within lines and you're trying to do your composition, you can't possibly think about the bad stuff at the same time. So it really is that nice therapeutic break. I don't, I don't tell people to ignore what they're feeling. It's important to process. It's important to think about it, but sometimes you just need some relief. <laughs> and so it provides that, that moment of relief for you just to be in a happy space. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, LA for dream says, wow, that makes so much sense. Tammy. Mm -hmm. Jennifer says, I have trouble finding my confidence. All right. I mm -hmm. want to, I want to, I want to speak to this. Well, I, I would like Tammy to speak to this since you are our impromptu special guest. What can Jennifer do yeah. to build that confidence? Okay. From so, a, not so much a technique aspect because we have a mental yeah. health professional here <laughs> from that, like the intersection yeah. of the creativity and being, um, being more mindful. Yeah. So confidence, you know, we can, and then here's the thing I always like, I say this a lot in my videos that for example, when we're feeling anxious, we're painting, we're worried about our composition. We're worried about wasting paper. We're worried. A lot of times people say, I'm worried about making something ugly. And then I think, you know, what's the worst that could happen? Because what's happening is it's our, our mindset, our story in our head, our narrative, right? And that's dictating, you know, how we feel and how we, how we feel what we do. So if we're lacking confidence, let's say, in our art, we're most likely lacking confidence in other aspects of our lives. Uh, if we're feeling anxious when we're painting, 
most likely we have anxiety that stems from relationships. It's in our work, it's in our family. And so being able to have those times where we are just focusing on creating and enjoying that, it helps us to, you know, forget about that narrative. So building confidence, it's really about this. This is what we have to change. So if we're sitting there, I'm just going to go with art for now. If we're sitting there processing and we're saying, wow, you know, like, for example, I did this leaf tutorial and I have to do it again because I don't like the fact that there's no spaces in between the leaves. That bothers me. I like how they turned out. I don't like the composition. So I'm redoing it. Um, but my story in my head is saying, you did a bad job. It looks ugly. People are going to look at that and say, that's a hot mess. That's the story I'm telling myself. And then I'm feeling a lack of confidence in who I am. You know what? This is like a really crazy time to be doing this because I'm actually, I'm on a low. <laughs> I'm on a low. Like a lot of self-doubt in my creations. And I'm just like, oh, I don't think I'm really good as an artist. And so I have to remind myself it's this. So if you can think, and you have to stop your brain. And I'm trying not to be too wordy. We have to stop your brain when you start to ruminate da, 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 and say, hey, is there another way to look at this? Um, you know, and this whole concept of you are enough, you are enough is going to create some happy feelings inside. If you repeat that in your head or you simply telling yourself, I'm confident, looking for times where you do a good job with whatever it is you're feeling insecure about and making a list, reminding yourself that those are, that's proof that you can have confidence in your skills. And when you mess up, remind yourself, I'm human. It's okay to mess up. I'm not going to let that dictate who I am. And that's going to help you grow some confidence as well. Keeping track of the ways that you are successful and the times when you aren't successful in your mind, remind yourself it's practice. I'm getting better and it's okay. I am normal. I'm human. And just being easy on yourself are some of the things that I would say. Christy, are you still there? I don't hear you anymore. I don't know if Christy's gone. Can you guys hear me? Friend, I am here. I am okay. still, yeah, hear that? Yeah, that's intense. I'm still working through some, some situations here. So we're right. gonna take another little moment that I will later cut out of this <laughs> recording. Yeah. And, oh, I figured out what I did wrong. Hi, just call me the inept technology painter. Oh, that's me too. Nice to meet you. I totally understand. And so that's the thing. This is this is a situation that might make an average person freak out. You know, there's all these people. They're watching live. They want a good show or whatever. I don't know why you're here. You you love Christy. That's why you're here. And yet Christy is able to proceed on with calm and being able to do what she does and it doesn't matter it's okay there's technology technology what am i saying technology is tough words are tough <laughs> words are tough i can't hear you anymore can you hear me no i can't hear you <sighs> it's me christy i'm the problem <laughs> I can read your words. I'm just practicing my lip syncing, my lip reading. There we go. How about now? Yay. But the All echo right. is awful. I'm, I'm trying to be crafty and go okay. with the better microphone and it's not working. So you still can hear mm -hmm. me? I can hear you great now. All right. Super weird, super <laughs> annoyed, but super still invested in this situation. Mm -hmm. And you know what's funny, Tammy? Can we just talk about this? Because I'm going to, I'm going to, as I'm still working through all of my junk here, I'm going to, um, I'm going to create a metaphor here. I'm going to tell a okay. story because as I have been working through all of this technological junk, as I have decided to bring you on last minute and work through all of that junk, <laughs> Do you want to know what has happened to the viewer count here? Tell me. It has gone up by about wow. 10%. That's awesome. So yeah, I think it's actually super interesting because mm -hmm. we always assume that when we make something ugly, 
when we fumble through a process, mm-hmm. when, you know, you know where I'm going with this. Do you yep. not? I do. I yeah, do. you do. Like do. we always assume that it's not going to be impactful. Yeah. But here I am struggle busting through this situation <laughs> right now as, as right. about as much as one could. And we're actually getting folks still watching and mm-hmm. still joining. So right. Right. that be an artistic metaphor for y'all. Absolutely. Absolutely. How long have you right. been streaming? Wanna... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no. What were you going to say? I was just going to ask how long have you been streaming today that I happened to pop onto YouTube to check my views and I saw you and I was like, I got to say hi to her. No, I just started. Really? That's so crazy. I just started when you popped in and I was like, shut the front door. <laughs> I was like, I hope she sees my message. I want to say hi. I did. So, All awesome. right. Let's look at another one. Um, okay. Here, I'm going to, I'm going to make this. Um, Marie mm-hmm. says, I worry about perfection and criticize myself so much. Tammy, go for it. Again, from the mental health perspective. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not, I was going to say, unfortunately, but just to recap some of the things, a lot of it, you know, is still going to go back to our, oh, you couldn't see that. There we go. Our, our thought processes perfectionism. So I like to say there's no room for perfectionism. Perfectionism. I can't talk today. There's no room for that in art. Absolutely not. I personally would call myself a perfectionist. I don't see it as a good thing. Um, I see it as a struggle. Uh, For some reason, there's certain things in my life that not everything. I speak Spanish. I learned in college and we speak it at home here and there. And still, I can, I'm fluent, but I find myself criticizing myself when it comes to art and when it comes to Spanish. For some reason, these two things um, really like are deeply important to me to do them right. But what does that mean about doing things right? And I hate that term because it implies there's only one way. And then our brain says, I didn't do it the right way. So it sucks, you know. Um, so perfect just being able to remind yourself that, you know, mistakes are for learning and for helping you grow. Um, cause when you make mistakes, then you're not being perfect, right? Who needs to be perfect? And I think those are messages that we receive in school. I don't, I'm not a parent hater. I'm a parent myself, but I tend to blame the parents. <laughs> I'm just saying, and I can put that blame on myself too. My kids will have to probably, you know, have lots of conversations with me one day of like, mama, this is what you could have done better. And hopefully I listen well. And we all need to listen to our babies because they tell us, they tell us things. I tell them, don't say this word. And they catch me doing it. And they tell me, and I'm like, oh, mortified, you know? So, but being able to, you know, we get these messages from home that we need to have all A's or we need to be, you know, the best in whatever sport team we are in. We need to accomplish and succeed we need to be at the top of our class the top of our you know whatever you know at work the best worker the hardest worker and i know people that when they're not at the top they just give up and they do nothing and that's not helpful so let's aim for let's aim for like let's let's not aim for a hundred percent let's aim for 80 shoot for that you Mm. know a nice high standard but it's not the best of the best, because that's when we start to develop that anxiety in ourselves. So if you worry about perfectionism, you have anxiety over your perfectionism, remind yourself, I don't need to be perfect. It's as simple as that. You have to take hold of the narrative and just say what is truth. And your brain will slowly start to pick that up. And your feelings will change. And then your behaviors will change. Thoughts, feelings, behaviors. That's what I would say. It's a tough one. I'm so glad you're here with us today. (laughs) I'm so glad to be here. I'm like, I hope I'm making sense. (laughs) Of course you're making Uh, sense. Of course you're making sense. What's not making sense is all of these technological issues that I'm having. But there are so many. Okay. I'm going to read through some of these comments. And I want you to interrupt me if you have a thought. Let's just okay. like, let's just shoot from the hip here. Okay. 
All right, I'm on a low grieving my son who would be seven years old next week. Oof. This calms me. I get all the things of grief. Um, it's the hardest time of the year. I think this is part of a conversation. What would you say to someone who is actively grieving a loss yeah. and yeah. has already is, is on a creative journey? What, what might be not knowing them personally, what might be mm -hmm. a healthy outlet with the, let's say watercolor project? Yeah. What, what's something you would say to them? So I think, first of all, I am so sorry you're going through that. You know, it, it wells up emotions in me too. I have a seven year old and I am so sorry that that happened. Like there's no word, there's no words and it's not fair. Um, it's not okay, but it's your reality. And it's gonna be a lot of emotions as you know, being able to be very kind with yourself and during this time, um, being able to maybe journal some of the things that you were feeling. Um, when it comes to watercolor, you know, I, in, in counseling, I usually tell people to try to find some way to to commemorate your the person you lost, mm -hmm. um, and find some type of routine that you can honor them. You can it could be daily, weekly, monthly, and definitely yearly. What are some things that they you know? Um, what are some things that? And sorry, is the the child was how old? Would be would seven. Have been seven. Would have been seven. So I don't know how old your baby was when they passed away. But, you know, even if it was just a tiny baby, you know, what were some things that they enjoyed? What what were some things that brought you joy with them? If they were older, what were some things that they loved? What did you love about them? With your watercoloring, I would sit down with your brushes, your palette out, and just start making, just allow like your brain to kind of shut off and just allow your, your hand to just start kind of making marks on the paper, um, maybe starting with basic shapes squiggly lines and maybe you start to because grief is sadness anger bargaining which is like if i had done this this wouldn't have happened um it's um so it's depression it's denial as well like when you first hear it you feel shock i can't believe this is happening and then there's acceptance at the end of that where you still fight it like it still hurts but you don't break down every time you think of that person. So these are stages you go up and down with. And so you might be painting and you're crying and you're sad and then you you might feel anger. This is not okay, this is not fair. And you might start really you know, going crazy with your brush strokes and you can feel the emotion in your painting. Um, so that's a way that I would practice just getting some of that out. Um, if, there's, if there's something that reminds you of, of your child, maybe you can get a reference photo and try to paint that. Um, but beyond that, find some type of routine or way that you can honor them mm. to be able to remember and have the good memories there. And eventually the sadness will dissipate, but it's okay that it takes time. Just make sure the number one thing I will say, feel your feelings, feel your feelings whenever they occur. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Goodness. Thank you so much yeah. for that. I have another comment here. Let me see if I can find it because, uh, and I, I do, while I'm looking for this, I want to say that I just feel like the bravery going on in the comments right now is kind mm -hmm. of blowing my mind and the willingness to share. And I just want mm -hmm. to say to everyone here, thank you for trusting myself and Tammy in this mm -hmm. space because mm -hmm. wow. Um, and I'm, I also need to thank Tammy again, because she is being the trooper, just getting into it. Okay. Um, okay. Palm Island Glassworks says, I approach art like a five-year-old. I paint to have fun and not hang my work in a gallery. So I see this as a really healthy approach to a, a hobbyist, to, to uh, no, I'm going to just say to anyone that is mm -hmm. painting and creating. What would you say, Tammy, to someone who struggles to to kind of adopt this, this kind of mm -hmm. mentality with their creative journey? 
I'm going to get a book. I'll be right back in like two seconds. Yeah, do it. Do it. Do it. 10 seconds. Because I got it right here. Okay. So this is not specifically about painting, okay? But it's about art. So this is called Drawing on the Right Side of Your Brain. There we I go. I love that book. Yeah? I so, have a video about it. Oh, really? I need to go watch it. Yeah, I purchased this several months ago. And so I am going to be teaching elementary art this school year and to K through eight. And so I contacted my, my art teacher from high school and I asked her, you know, what are some tips? I've never taught little kids before. What do I do? And so she recommended this book. This is the only textbook she uses. In this book, it talks about how children have just this beautiful, and I've seen it in my own children, you know, this carefree way of painting and drawing and creating, and they don't have the narrative of, I must be perfect, I must do this right, this is ugly, this is not okay. But around nine years old is what she says in the book, children, their, um, their brain starts to lateralize and they're starting to kind of um, being, they're starting to get that negative, that narrative going and where they're self-critiquing and, and analyzing their art in a negative way. And that's the point where they really want to start drawing and creating realistically and they get frustrated because they can't and they give up. So she said she did drawing exercises with her students and say, draw a portrait, draw a house. And the kind of level as adults of how they drew is basically reflected on when they stop doing art. I have someone that just recently told me they were drawing something when they were eight or nine years old and the teacher, the art teacher looked at her and said, well, I guess you're not an artist. And she never drew again. And that broke my heart because we have art teachers out there saying these things. We have parents saying these things to our kids and we stop being creative. So the fact that you can approach art as a five-year-old is beautiful. Never lose that. I wish I had that. My mentality is my narrative just pops in and just like, duh, duh, duh. really, I, I still criticize myself. I did it this morning um, after I had an, a nice painting session and then I had a not so nice painting session. So um, so the, the point is remembering and realizing that this happens at a very young age and we have to be able to get back to that point where we're fighting that narrative. So once again, reminding yourself, right? This is fun. This is practice. And that looks really beautiful, by the way, what you did there, Christy. I always love it when you add colors together. I never seem like mine can... Mine look as vibrant, but anyway, I need to practice. But reminding yourself that the practice this is supposed to be fun. This is practice this is supposed to be fun. And we, especially in this westernized culture, we, we push perfectionism on ourselves and our kids and all adults. And we have this idea, oh, here's the other thing that's kind of crazy. Boys are socialized in general. We're stereotyping here. Boys in general are socialized to be adventurous and to try. When you fail, you keep trying. Girls are socialized to be what? Can anyone guess? <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Um, Isn't that horrible? Peacemakers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't say a bad word ever. Um, always get along. So if we know that we're already kind of doomed by society just with those messages or what we have at home or at school, remember we don't have to, we don't have to, um, believe in that narrative okay so just have to remind yourself it's okay and here's the other thing one of the best advice i can give you is give yourself permission to make an ugly painting i've heard christy do that say that before and i did that a couple years ago i was in a rut i was like you know it's me and i said i'm so angry i was so mad about something that happened and i was like i'm gonna sit down i'm going to make an ugly painting and it became one of my favorite paintings that actually sold it to a friend so there you go. Give yourself permission to mess up. And you might not actually mess up. And if you do, there's always tomorrow. That's right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, so good. So you talked about something that um, I've had some conversations with. I did a video about it. Yeah. I, know, I can't have a conversation like casually without turning it into a whole YouTube thing, apparently. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> but it's uh, the concept of creative wounds. 
Mm, you okay. touched on that where, you know, the art teacher, we all have that mm -hmm. person, I feel like in our past that wounded us at a younger age, at a, at yeah. a tender age where we were extremely creatively vulnerable, mm -hmm. you know, whether it was that we painted our tree leaves purple or, you know, we innovated on the assignment parameters and that wasn't well received, you know? So yeah. I would love to hear you. I, oh, I'm going to, and I just, I'm putting you on the spot and you are just <laughs> fantastic. And I, oh, I'm going to send you a present or something for being such you a trooper. You did. I just want to say, <laughs> I just want to say, Christy, I, and I've been using her first set of brushes, just a little, you know, little advertisement for, I don't know how long it's been. I mean, I don't remember, but it's been a while and I had your palette. And then Christy was like, can I send you my new set of brushes? And I was like, yes, of course. And I got back from vacation and it was a whole box of all kinds of things. Another palette, her set of brushes, her travel brush and her collapsible water pot. So thank you for that. You've sent me sent me plenty and this is a gift too i'm enjoying this so anyway I'm glad. you're i'm so glad you continue <laughs> so my question is this what exercise project technique would you recommend to someone right now who's sitting here watching this who is has realized they have a creative wound and that mm -hmm. realize that that has established a lot of fear in them regarding their art yeah. process. What project would you would you suggest that they tackle first? Okay. So, you know, I actually I am busy. I'm always trying to make you know, like, what am I saying? New videos. So I have this note on my phone. I'm always like, you know putting down the ideas and I have way too many ideas for the time that I have to do them. But one idea that I've got pretty, pretty scripted out, I don't script my videos. I just kind of talk, but, but like the activities is an art therapy, not art therapy. I don't teach that specifically question. There is a lot of echo. Do you hear that there as well? Echo. So when I'm talking, I'm hearing myself echo and I don't know if that's going to be in the feed. Yeah. Just Let's saying. try this. I'm going to mute me over there. Okay. Can you still hear me? Okay. Perfect. So I have, um, it's going to be a video on different art techniques that we can do just to process. Um, and so it's going to be mixing together how art can be used. I wouldn't call it, I, I wouldn't call it therapy. You know, therapy is therapy, right? Going to a person or seeing them telehealth wise and talking and processing, but being able to use it as a way for self care. So it's going to be five techniques that we can utilize and how art affects your brain, all that stuff. So I think one thing that comes to mind to do, it's just simple, um, but just take your paper and I would write down, I want you to write, I would write down the ways that you have been wounded, uh, maybe three. If there's more, write them out. Um, I've had people, I, I have this little, it's kind of, I mean, anyway, this is from an old video. It just happens to be on my desk. So rainbows, rainbows, they symbolize, they're just beautiful, they're vibrant, they're happy. To me, they symbolize a new beginning. And so being able to maybe um, paint as many rainbows as you would write something down. So let's say three to five. And just like use that process and you're just making the colors and you can do like cool colors on one and warm colors on another or the true rainbow colors on a third one. And then below that, I, and so you're using that process of just trying not to think about anything and just like putting those marks down. And then below that, I want you to write what is one way that you are wounded, you know, when it comes to your art. This could be any way. You could do it, extend it beyond that. Um, there's so many people that have gone through true trauma and don't know how to get it out. And so it's kind of, it's an, a different way than journaling. Journaling, sometimes people don't feel like writing by hand. We just don't really write anymore. It's a lot of words, but doing the painting and write down one way on each rainbow, how you were wounded, and then write down what is one thing that you wish for yourself. How would you like that to be healed? And that maybe is a little goal. And then maybe one at a time you focus on that one rainbow of like, this is my goal. You know, if the wound was, 
Well, um, I was told I'm a terrible drawer, so I gave up drawing, right? So maybe then you decide that week, every day, or don't make it crazy. If you can't do every day, that's going to be a stressor. Three times a week, right? And this next week, I'm going to sit down for five minutes, I'm going to get a reference photo or whatever, and I'm going to draw. And I'm going to remind myself, this is good for me. I can do this. I am artistic. Everybody is artistic. In this book, she believes that everyone can do art. And she talks about how, I'm going to go in the brain now. We're going to talk about the brain. I'm not a brain person. <laughs> I don't study the brain. But I know a few things about it. The left side is very analytical and verbal. And, you know, we're, we're just like analyzing things and putting words to things. The right side is more creative. It's visual. And she says that if you are to get into the right side of your brain when you're doing art, you're going to draw better. You're going to paint better. And that's that flow state we talk about where it's like time is gone and I can't remember that I have to go to the bathroom and I'm not hungry and I'm not in pain because I am just in the moment. It like transcends you to somewhere else. And that's where you like really kind of know what you're doing and you've been, you're not just like step by step. When we're in school, we're in our left brain all day. We're learning stuff, we're writing it down, but we need a little break sometimes to have art on that right side to be able to just relax and enjoy and get that break from the mental stuff that causes us frustration. So I don't know, I hope that makes sense. Just focusing on that one goal because it really is about you making little changes and that narrative reminding yourself I'm artistic. My right side knows more. The left side gets frustrated yep. with with um, the details and um, sometimes can you know have a hard time. And it it's like, oh, I'm supposed to draw a tree. I see this picture of a tree. I know what a tree looks like. So then it'll just fill in the details, and you're not actually drawing from the reference because your brain is taking over the left side. Anyway, if you want to know more, get this book. I think I have it in my Amazon supply li affiliated links because I love it so much, but it's really, really helpful. Powerful. Yeah. So yeah, hot. I'll link down below after this is all said and done. We're not making you nervous, are we? No, it's just hot in my house. It's we hot. keep it at like 78. So but yeah, it's like 100. Can you hear me? I can hear you, yeah. Good. I will include a link after this is all said and done. Uh, I do have that book in my Good. Amazon situation. Yeah. So I will okay. go ahead and certainly include that. I have rebooted my one phone. So we are going to take another small break <laughs> to see if Christy can possibly try to um, make this technologically disastrous situation any better. But I will tell you that we are still gaining folks watching us here. So oh, again, oh, great. imperfect right. is beautiful. You're rebooting? You're rebooting, you said? I reboot. I, I do these on two phones. Yeah. So I always have one that is always okay. working in some capacity. But, I, I'm you know, I'm always trying to, like, make it better, make it yeah. Perfect. <laughs> I, know. I know. It's what we do. It's our nature. It's what we do. To fight it. It's hard. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to find another. I'm going to see if somebody has a question. All right. So I'm scrolling. Um, oh, my gosh. Somebody had a second grade teacher tell them that they were deformed because they were left handed. That oh. is a creative wound. <laughs> yes. Ridiculous. Yeah. This book talks about that, too. My mom is one of those people that was left-handed by birth and teachers and parents made her be right-handed. And in this book, it talks a lot about how it stunts, it stunts your growth, not your growth growth, but like mentally it can stunt your development and your emotions and all kinds of things that it just, it's crazy. It's rewiring things that shouldn't be rewired. So that's very sad. I'm sorry that happened. It's Happened just wild to, so to me, the, yeah. the things yeah. that come out of folks' mouths. I know. That's All right, perfect. Tammy, while I go ahead and try again to fix what's broken here, I would love for you to share two of your most favorite projects, exercises, et cetera, that you, that are just go-tos when you are feeling like you are not enough mm -hmm. in this space. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, let's see. I experienced that this morning. So there's that. Oh, well, there um, you go. <laughs> this is kind of a, it's kind of a, a, it's a very weird coincidence. This is happening. 
because I was like, I was like feeling it hard. Let me get my sketchbook. Go get it. So, I mean, this is not an exercise. This is just, you know, this is just what I do. But when I am, so for me, I'm thinking more like confidence when I'm lacking confidence in my skills and i have a video that i posted 12 things i wish i knew when i first started watercolor that um lucky me that that one got pretty popular so i finally got monetized which is exciting i'm still waiting for adsense to send the stupid verification code but anyway i think they do that on purpose they're waiting because they don't want to pay me so no i have no idea but um so anyway in that i talk about like some of these things and kind of go into the psychological aspect of it. And I try to be real. Oh, and I have another one on 10 fears, maybe 10 fears that every artist have. And that one is more the psychological aspect. So, but the fear of like not being enough, you know, and so I find that to be my thing. I compare and that's the problem. We're comparing our work. I go on Instagram. I see people like Christy and I see your, and your artists funded and you have such a specific, like such a specific type of art. You know, it's clear that if I see it, like that's Christy and that's wonderful. Your style, you know, it's very recognizable. Um, and there's a lot of others that have that. And, you know, I'm still feeling like I'm trying to find that. But for me, if I'm feeling the lack of confidence, I take out this giant book. Look at how big it is. Um, it's called The Flower Book. But everyone on YouTube is using these books these days. And of course I had to pick up some and I have another one here. I don't know if you have these linked or whatever, but these books are so great. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Where'd you go? I don't know what's happening. A terrible accent. I'm sorry for people who I'm offending by doing that. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm sorry. So look at this. We've got all these really cool flowers and it's just like, oh no, we've got a huge echo now. Who knows what happens? It is what it is. It is what it is. So look at that. <laughs> so I'll just keep blabbing. I don't know if others can hear Christy. Okay, cool. All right. So there's that. That's called the flower color guide. And then this one is called the flower color guide. I'm getting some reflection here. So I keep turning it. And these are just arrangements. So what am I saying to you? What I do when I lack confidence is I go to these little books or the big book right there. And there, these are all on Amazon. And I pick from these tabs because I have saved places where I'm inspired. And these flowers make my heart happy, for whatever reason. I didn't used to care about flowers. My mom is a horticulturalist, couldn't give a rip about plants. And now I have some plants here because I like them and they make me happy. And when I go to the grocery store and I buy myself flowers, it's because I'd rather have that as my treat and they make me happy. So what I did this morning, <laughs> was I did a big version and a small version of these Peruvian Peruvian lilies is what it was called. And then I'm telling you, like my brain is looking at that and I'm saying, okay, well, it's not exactly great or how I wish it would be. And I have to remind myself to stop that. But the point is that doesn't matter. The point is that I need to feel secure and confident. And so I go and I grab that reference that makes me happy and I start to paint that. And it gives me those parameters where my brain isn't having to make it up myself. I don't have to make up the design or the compass, comp composition. I can just paint from what I see. Now, it's hard to paint what you see, and that's a skill that you learn when you practice it. And I'm, I still could um, improve on that, and that's why I practice. So that's one thing I would encourage you to do, just to feel more confident in what you're doing. And another exercise... Um, just doing like, so I have these on my desk. It's from a video a while ago. I don't know why they're on my desk, but I put them there last night, I think. It was going through my drawers. So just like doing some practice exercises to get your brain. So the idea is that, and Christy does these too, and she does them beautifully. Oh, I'm trying to get my, here we go. Okay. Um, so this practice exercise is great because you are going around in these squares and you are just trying to like get smaller and smaller and smaller. There we go. And you are not thinking too much about all the junk. You are just thinking about making the design. But it's not too complicated that your brain is hurting, okay? This one, this is fun. Um, doodling, 
and just deciding I'm going to make a bunch of doodles on my paper and then I'm going with a pen and then I'm going to try to fill in and see if I can find shapes that look like something that I can recognize. Okay. So, oh, here we go. That makes more sense. So I've got like a weird llama thing happening here and a cactusy thing and there's like a weird alien and a mushroom and I, my brain found these after I doodled randomly on my paper and then I painted them. So that's really fun. And then I did two of them. So I just, I just put them side by side and I taped them and I did them all at once. And then you can practice your brush strokes. You know, you can just take your brushes and your paint and just start adding in squiggly lines and make petals and leaves. And these are just kind of fun things to get you relaxed and in the moment. And if you want to add a psychological thing to it, write something down. You know, right now I'm really upset because let's just write it down. I'm mad at Steve because he's a jerk. Whatever. What, who's Steve? I don't know who Steve is, but I don't think I even know one. But writing down the thing that's bothering you and make it a little bit more therapeutic and then write a goal. This is what I want to, I would like to be less angry at Steve. And then I'm going to try to be less angry at Steve this week. Maybe I'll make a little goal about how I'll do that. That's what I got. <laughs> I can't hear you. I can't hear you. <laughs> da -da -da -da. That's the way it goes. <laughs> what? I cannot hear you. It could be that other people can hear you. Can you hear her, guys? Tell us in comments. Who can you hear? What about now? Ooh. Ooh. Yes. I got but you. But the I'm freaking here. echo is back. <laughs> Shoot me. Well. It's, I'm just going to go with the metaphor flow, mm -hmm. friends. So hot right now. <sighs> because this is your journey sometimes. Mm -hmm. Where all of the literal shite hits the fan all oh, at the yeah. same time. But I will guarantee anybody want to give this video a boop right now that feels <laughs> confidently that regardless of the echo, regardless of all the weird camera changes, regardless of all the right. junk that's been happening tonight, you're still getting something out of it. Go ahead and comments and saying and say like, hell yeah. Or if you don't curse, just be like, yup. <laughs> Let us know right. if you're still getting value out of this, despite its radical imperfection. H-E double okay, hockey sticks. This is what people are saying. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see what they're saying. Oh, wait. Oh, my gosh. There's so many comments. I, I can't wait to go back <laughs> and, like, respond to these. That's so fun. You have some work to do so many this is great thank you we don't yeah. care we love you in all your imperfect glory are you on mute not anymore boop great chat um we don't oh, i already read that one this is great yeah yep hell yeah oh yeah yup i'm loving this oh yes mm -hmm. lots of value see right. see oh and images by gretchen says no reverb <laughs> glad to <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh so crazy okay all right so tammy i want to ask you one more question and then i will release you back into the world <laughs> this has been fun it's already been an hour that's kind of insane okay so what would you tell someone starting their journey today that has the worst paper, mm. the worst things, the worst paints. Yeah. What would you, what kind of life would you speak into them okay. in regards to all of the fears that I would assume they'd be having given what I just said? Okay. Let me grab something. I also have a video on that. It's called How to Paint with Crappy Paper. <laughs> of course you do. Of course I do, because I'm the cheap painter sometimes. All right, so I'm gonna get my props. Okay, so I started painting three years ago during the pandemic. I was doing uh, classes with my friend, Tracy, 
And she was teaching our Zoom people. It was just, it was just like a casual group. And she was teaching people art. And I was teaching people mental health. And we were collaborating. And one day she taught us watercolor and I was like, oh, I love this. This is amazing. Like, where has this been my entire life? And I've always been a creative person, but just not practicing a lot um, and not painting at all. So, so that sparked that in me. And I've kind of just like painted pretty much every day, like intensely. And I went through a huge, I've always had anxiety. And I went through a bout of depression for about a year and a half. A couple months ago it ended, you know, it kind of got out of it. So it's pretty recent in my life. And it got me through that. It got me through that. So here's the thing. I I believe in 100% cotton paper. It's great. It's fantastic. Wonderful. It's the best. And there's variations in there. But not everybody can afford it. And not everyone can afford the expensive brushes and expensive paints. And when I first started, I had how much how much budget did I have? Zero, zero dollars. Um, paying off loans, paying off stuff. I wasn't working at the time, um, and so I just bought the junk. I bought the crappy paper. I bought the crappy paints, like the craft paints, not like Crayola. Uh, Crayola Crayol is like I feel like it's pretty decent compared to what I bought at Ross. It's that chalky stuff. Like, like that big old thing with the circles and it's chalky and you're like just really scrubbing to get anything out of it. And I don't even know like where I have a, an example here too, but I don't know where it is because my desk is well, whatever, unorganized. But I used that. And as I would have a little money saved up, I would buy one thing. So I honestly, I started off with these sketchbooks, the Canson ones. It's not crappy paper. I'll be honest. Some people hate it. I think they're pretty good. Guess what? I still use them um, right here. Okay, right here. So in my RV trip that I just went on, I painted every day. And I did these little samples in this book. And I've even done some videos with this book. So it's pulp paper. Who cares? Use it. If you can afford it. Now, this costs like 14 bucks. Some people can't afford 14 bucks for a sketchbook. Don't buy it. That's okay. At Walmart, they have a pack of 50 sheets. It's B Company paper. It's like 11 bucks. This is the best I have seen. So in my video, I talk about, hey, what's this? This is cardboard. <laughs> you can paint on cardboard. Is it going to be the best? No. But will you be able to practice your brush strokes and get muscle memory and make mistakes and be, not care about it? Absolutely. Okay, look at this. This is a grocery bag. You can paint on that. Okay, is it the best? It's not, but does it matter? It don't, it don't matter. Look at this, Canson paper, the Canson paper that I was just showing you, okay? So, and then I have like, I painted on the, on the cotton paper too. Choose what you have. Cause if you are sitting down to paint with a $5 piece of cotton professional paper, I guarantee you are gonna be freaked out of your mind because you are not going to want to put those brush strokes down and make a mistake. All right. So this is like my, and I'm getting goosebumps right now. I want you to paint. Christy wants you to paint. I think we're on the same page. When I do videos, I use hundred percent cotton paper because I, I have a little bit of a budget now I can do that. And I want you guys to see the best, but I'm not saying you have to use it. Okay. I use paint. Well, look at this paintbrush. That's not great, but I use paint brushes from wherever Ross is a great place or uh, TJ Maxx. They'll have some cheaper stuff. Just use what you can. The bottom line is to create and enjoy that process and build up your budget one thing at a time. You'll get there. But don't stress about it. I just want you to paint. Just paint. Please paint. Please don't paint. Don't worry. Please paint. <laughs> Please paint. Pick up yeah. the brush. Yeah. Even if it looks like this guy who has seen better days, you know? That's so. right. He's, he Still just needs smart. a little water, a little love, a little squirt down. He's fine. He still has paint on him. Look at that. Back to normal. <laughs> it's actually not a bad brush. Oh, no, this is a good brush. <laughs> I did not take care of this brush. All right. Don't do that. I love it. Yeah. I love your painting. Wow. I didn't even watch the process. What did you do? What? 
I said, I love your, your painting. What did you do? I didn't, I wasn't watching the process of all the lines. Beautiful. I, I don't know what I did. I was making <laughs> some marks with my number six. Yeah. Kind of going like that and rinsing yeah. in between. And this echo needs to get it. I know. <laughs> did I just say that live? Yes, I did. You can always <laughs> cut it out later. It's fine. People won't remember. It's fine. Um, <laughs> Uh, so I did some just simple marks like press drag and that's it just a drag yeah. and then I did like a pulling or ombre on top and bottom okay and then while it was all juicy I started dragging with this like this kind of hold on the pencil you know mm -hmm. like, oh yeah and then I just started dragging and this is um HB so it had, okay. you know, it has some grain and grit to it. And I just kept dragging and messing around. And then yeah. I was thinking about, I'm going to do it. I'm going in here. This is the kind of stuff that I love to do mm -hmm. when I'm feeling less than, when I'm feeling mm -hmm. just super sensitive in my feelings about my talent, about my mm -hmm. skills. I like to go, I like to go abstract. Uh, I don't do journaling. I, I, I feel like I should or maybe mm. want to try to, but I I go very abstract and just let myself yeah. just make a mess. Yeah. But then oh, sometimes it. some of the coolest techniques that I've stumbled upon, some of my like weird hybrid techniques have come out of moments like this. Mm. So. Yeah, I love that. So now that. I'm going in, it's still damp and I'm going in with a really heavy hand and then creating like a graphite ombre over top. And I might even like, oh yeah, like go in and smudge the wet paint in with the graphite, like really get mm -hmm. into it. That's fun. It looks like, really like nice. Middle Earth is opening up. <laughs> That's, so. cool. That's cool. I see lots of boops. I see lots of Tracy sitting here painting. Thank you guys so much. More hell yeahs, more boops. Love the realness. Well, yeah. praise God and hallelujah, because yeah. we are like full on real here. We are deep, deep in the realness here. <laughs> My two favorite people says GSD mom. Aww. Susie said this is fun. Um, Shirley says, makes us feel human after all. Well, yes, indeed. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Paul Mylan Glassworks says, anytime watching you, whether we can hear you, um, <laughs> it's all about the visual. There you go. There you go. Yeah, there you, there you go. go. <laughs> Cheryl says, so freaking on point. Thank you, Cheryl. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, thank you for Tammy, because Tammy's been the one all on the points tonight. Uh, we got a whoop, whoop. <laughs> I'm getting some great ideas on what to do to handle my issue with not doing my art right. Mm. That is tapper, tapper chat. I got old eyes and I really need newer glasses. So if I mispronounce your name, that's why. <laughs> what a treat to get to watch you both, says Cassie Hatch. Mm. Yes. Wonderful. Awesome. Oh my goodness. So I will say, I want to, I want to say this as I've been navigating this crazy live, I've been thinking of all the ways that I want to edit and change and make mm -hmm. it cleaner and make it more perfect after the fact, just, just so everyone can understand the point I'm about to make. In YouTube, you can go in after a live and you can cut out parts and make mm -hmm. it more seamless and yep. make it more digestible for the folks that are watching on replay, right? But I'm going to do a self-control human experiment and I am not going to touch mm. this bad boy. Wow. Well, I love it. Because I, love it. I feel like it has taught me a lot and I hope the sprinkling of my metaphors tonight with my struggles with this particular aspect of my creative process, help you understand your own, you know, 
we've got to show not only ourselves, but sometimes we've got to just show the world our ugly. We've got to be real. We've got to be mm-hmm. real about our expectations with the finished products that we're producing. We've got to yeah. be real with the fact that the majority of what we create in most you know, measurable periods of time are not going to be a favorite, right? Mm-hmm. You yep. might go through a couple weeks time. I've been there. I'm sure Tammy's been there where you're like, I am on fire. I'm <laughs> loving everything I'm doing, but it's, it's yeah. a season, right? Yeah. yeah. So if you can have seasons of just super high satisfaction with your art, of course, you're going to have seasons of completely like, you're just feeling like you want to like run off the next, you know, 10 foot cliff and, and, Mm -hmm. and, and, and your, you know, ability to use your hands or something like, you know, you have those moments where you're just like, I suck at this and I don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. But we have to sit in, I say this all the time. We have to sit in the discomfort Mm. and, and more poignantly for, for painters, we need to paint through the discomfort. Yeah. I agree. I agree and realize that where we're at today, the supplies we have today, the space, the light, the time we have today, even if it's just two, three minutes, we are enough. Mm-hmm. That, that's, that's where I'm at. Mm. So. You show up, you show, show up. up, put some brush strokes on paper. You love it, you hate it, who cares? What is the worst that will happen? What's the worst that will happen? You have to get another piece of sh- uh, piece of paper, a sheet of paper. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Don't worry, this isn't made for kids. I know they're not listening. Hopefully not. But seriously, another sheet of paper, and you just try again, and yeah. it is what it is. The back, the 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 grocery bag, the lunch bag, the you yeah. know all the things. Printer paper. Sorry, printer paper. I've I've painted on that as well. It's in my video. You fold it over. You're practicing muscle memory and understand. Yes. You can work out your composition. And I have I have a book here, of course. All the things. I just use this mixed media book, and uh, I don't have any paintings in there. But usually I'll sketch out something, and then I'll watercolor paint over it, just so I can work out something. And sometimes I actually like it better. Then the final product where I was like stressing about it. Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah. Well, friends, I, 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 I couldn't have imagined a more perfect evening. Yeah. I, I pray that this has brought you what you were hoping for by showing up here tonight. Mm-hmm. Please be sure to. Go ahead and find Tammy. I'm going to link all her channel deets and and everything below Mm -hmm. once we're through here. Uh, Go find her. Go subscribe. Watch. Mm -hmm. Listen. um, Mm -hmm. Hit her up with questions. You know, I'm sure she'll. Yeah, I love it. I love it. She'll love it. I love it. (laughs) And uh, just keep showing up. Keep showing up. Mm -hmm. And this has been a blast. So I'm going to be signing off. Thank you. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you and, for inviting uh, I, me. I just wish you all a ton of happy painting. And uh, this video here is going to pop up next. It's going to be a great option for you to, to decompress from all of this beautiful <laughs> chaos. So until next time. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.